Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of Now That's What I Call Unique, looking at songs that are doing things a little different. Maybe it's something you've never heard anything like before. As usual, I want to kick this off with a little disclaimer. Different people have different exposures and relationships to art and music, and what somebody finds exceptionally unique, somebody else might find less so. So, just kind of keep that in mind before you go down there into the comment section and talk about how you've heard something like this a dozen times before. Today, we're going to be checking out the band Mulets with the song Requiem. This comes off of their self titled album. Let's dive into it and see what they're bringing to the table today. So we have a folk melody. Three beats of rhythm and then a beat of silence. Layering this up on multiple instruments. Bringing percussion in on it. Oh yeah, okay. This has atmospheric soundtrack written all over it. Oh, where to, oh. Back that rhythm from earlier. Plucked uh, cello, I think. One and the one and the end of two, giving us a little bit of syncopation on that. So it's interesting that we still have the general timbre work. I love this melody. Oh, and the harmony too. The general timbre work of folk, we're sticking with that sound, but compositionally we're shifting more into um, pop sounds. Each of us too weak to wield the weapon we had selected. Regret is heavy in the air, neglect is all pervading. How we used to sing when we were dying. How we used to sing when we were dying. Oh, that's nice. How we used to sing when we were dying. How we used to sing when we were dying. The first flowers when we came upstairs. Don't leave it languishing there. Defended by the tender hearted. Five month old is a path that's foolishly unguarded. Don't watch. The melody here is only a couple of notes. 
whereas uh, last time we had both vocals in, it was quite a bit of a wider range of pitches. Interesting listening to the melody kind of get simplified down into something a bit catchier and easier to remember. The ornamentation over here from this violin, filling in the spaces from the lead. <laughs> okay. Four on the floor with the hand claps and the bass kick. modulation also we didn't have the full drum kit in a majority of this song did we Your melody from earlier in the track to wrap it up. Okay. Oh, we've actually heard this melody on the vocals too. Faster than last time, but. Just an abrupt stop. Okay. Yeah, interesting stuff. I don't know if I would say that this is the most unique thing I've heard, but it's definitely, it's fresh. It's definitely fresh. And I think it's it primarily comes from the fact that I listen to music, I think, different than your average person. <laughs> uh, I think I've mentioned this before. I tend to listen to music in a way of, you know, what's on, what what, what would be on the sheet music. When I listen to the music, I kind of mentally put it down into sheet music, and I hear more of the music itself, more more so than the sonic representation of it. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like I'm listening more to the notes rather than the sound of the notes. And so while I am picking up that this is a string trio and we have a traditional drum kit in here and we have vocals, I'm also primarily listening to just the fact that there are notes and there are chords and how all this is interplaying and the rhythms of ideas more so than the textures of the instruments playing them. And so, you know, you might listen to this and think, wow, I've never heard anything like that. Uh, you know, I've never heard of uh, a string trio playing folk pop combination, um, but I see it on, on paper. I'm like, okay, so this is definitely this style, and that's this style, and that's this style. And the interesting thing is how it all gets um, kind of run together in a sense. This is full of new ideas, though, um, which kind of segments. I would have liked a little bit more crossover, but we have more of like four distinct movements on the track. So there's that as well, um, which I think it kind of pulls away from the uniqueness. I'll get into that in a second, though. Um, but I, I do, I do find this to be something very interesting. 
And I'm glad we got to check it out because I may have to check out more of this. Although I think this has a... Um... Yeah, this features somebody from Band of Skulls. And I don't know... I'm going to have to look that up um, later when I do the lyrical dive. And I'll see who's featured to kind of get a gist of that because I've run into this before where I've heard a song and then absolutely loved it. And like one of the cornerstones to what I loved about it was a featured musician or vocalist. And I'm like, ah, oh, dang, you know, it would be good without them, but not as good. And it always feels like kind of a letdown. So I don't know where the featured musician uh, fits into this. It might be a, a point that I would not want to listen to more of without them. Or would be less interesting, I should say. Let's dive into some analysis, though. Get away from this subjective garbage. Uh, Alright. So I think what I want to talk about first is evolution in this song. I mentioned at the beginning, we have the violin and the cello, I think. Maybe it was two violins. They introduced the song, though, with some very... I don't want to say stereotypical, but it's immediately noticeable, um, like folk, medieval folk music. Um, exactly what you would kind of expect to hear at, I don't know, like a Renaissance fair or, uh, you know, generic soundtrack mu music for, you know, some, some bards playing in, in a bar in, in like a, I don't know, like a medieval film or something like that, right? I don't know how accurate it is, but that's the first thing I think of, thanks to pop culture. We have very light percussion here. Eventually we have a bass kick drum comes in, um, and it kind of feels like a lower pitched hand drum that they might have had, just a ring of wood with uh, some sort of stretched skin on top of it and hitting it with a you know pretty decent sized mallet. Um, it doesn't quite sound exactly like that, but it certainly fills the same role. We, def we definitely don't have any cymbals or snare sounds or toms in here. It's uh, definitely something aiming to replicate that without actually having any sort of traditional hand drum. Melodically, harmonically, oh, you know what it was? It was the melody over these long held out notes. That's what it was. Um, but yeah, melodically and harmonically, very much taking inspiration from folk. Um, from here, though, the song kind of stops. We kick it in again. We bring some new ideas in. There's a second violin. There's two vocals now. I'd already mentioned that these vocals are a bit uh, wide in their pitches. From the highest pitch to the lowest pitch in this melody, there's quite a bit of width to that. We also have both vocalists singing the exact same line, giving us this interesting panning, the stereo effect, but also giving us a little bit of harmony at times. It's specific notes. For uh, A majority of it is that they're singing the same note, but I love those little moments where they sort of deviate just a little bit to add that extra flavor, that extra character to the line. There's some larger jumps in it as well. Um, it showcases a little bit of the skill of the vocalists, but mostly it's there to just drive this melody forward. It's not something that I think is going to get stuck in most people's minds. It is not uh, the type of simple melody that typically becomes an earworm. That's not to say that it isn't memorable. It's just not as memorable as something razor honed and uh, you know singularly focused in order to be memorable. Um, in this section, we tend to hear a little bit of counterpoint and some small rhythmic intricacies. Not really looking at what I would call polyrhythm at all, but listening to the ways that the violins and the little bit of percussion we have accent different lines. That's where you can get a little bit of your rhythmic depth from. Now from here, we evolve into an interesting point of the song the pop melody the vocals strip down quite a bit how wide of a range they're using 
and a lot of it sits on one note. Maybe they'll sing that five or six times, five or six syllables, then move up to a higher one and come right back down. It really is not a lot of movement to it. It really is a rhythmic and textural melody, and it's what makes it so ear-catching. It's what makes it an earworm. There's a lot of popular music that, while the verse might be a little bit more adventurous, when we come to the chorus, the catchy part, when we get to that hook, you'll find that it's just not as, uh, it doesn't use as many notes. It is something that, uh, I don't know if it's recently been popularized or maybe it's popped up throughout pop music. <laughs> I've used that word too many times um, in, in the past, but it's something that I've certainly noticed in the past uh, you know, decade or so of seeing more, especially mainstream pop melodies, simplifying their range and pitch. Um, and so we do have that here. I thought that was really interesting because when we compare that or when we pair it, not compare it, just pair it with the harmony, the chord progression that is implied by the root tones that the cello is giving us, we've shifted very far away from those folk inspirations and have moved into something that feels very much inspired by a modern pop. Uh, I don't necessarily want to say it's super modern, but definitely of the last 30 years or so, 40 years maybe. Um, and, you know, definitely less inspired by hundreds of years ago. And I think that's really interesting to make that leap. I almost want to say that that second section kind of toes the line a little bit, but I'm not entirely confident in that assessment. Um, to me, it felt like a rather large leap where we were definitely folk there, a little less folk here, and then definitely pop here. I don't know how much pop I felt in that second section. It's something that I might want to check out on a second listen, though. But this is sort of wild. As I mentioned during the reaction, that this section... What did I say during the reaction? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I had it cleared in my head a second ago. But anyways, this section is just so clearly defined to me of being modern coded. But we get to keep all of the old instrumentation. It's not like they decided to pick up electric guitars and do like pop rock or, uh, you know, go full synthesizer or anything like that. We're still playing with these acoustic instruments. It's just what's on paper. The music itself has been updated by hundreds of years. Um, and I thought that was a pretty cool combination of sounds there. You don't get to hear pop music with a string quartet too often unless it's a cover of some sort. Um, and even that, I think, is a bit on the rarer side unless it's just super, super popular songs. And that's what I like about this is that it's brand new music, I think. At least it's brand new to me. Maybe this is um, a modern reimagining re of some older written song, but I think that's pretty cool. We just I don't get to hear string trios play uh, pop styled music too often. But what I found really interesting was where we went from here. Before we came back to a sort of amalgamation of everything that we've heard so far, we entered into an instrumental part. The energy rose up a little bit, violin took lead, we had these ornamental ideas every four bars, or four beats maybe? I, I just remember 75-25 uh, division, I don't remember if, I was, if that was bars or beats, but... A majority of it, we'd have um, a lick coming out from the main uh, violin, and then to punctuate it in the final quarter of whatever the phrase length was, we'd have this violin over here do a couple of notes. It must have been beats, right? They were not four bar for that would have been way too long. Yeah, it must have been uh, three beats for the center, one beat to the right pan. But what was coming out of the center had a little bit of a classical vibe to it. But I think what really stuck with me was it felt rock. Maybe a little bit of the lighter side of metal. Interestingly, probably what we would call heavy metal. 
<laughs> I always love that. Heavy metal is one of the lightest metals compared to where extreme metal went. <laughs> uh, that, that cracks me up. But yeah, like, I think if you put that violin melody on a guitar, it would sound perfect inside of a rock or metal track. Um, and that kind of surprises me. Because it still kind of fits. But we've gone from folk to pop to rock. And I don't really know how or why, but it happened. It's that, it's that eclectic combination that makes this unique to me. It's not so much of the instrumentation, although it's neat to hear some of this stuff with a string trio. But it's, it's the combination of all of these sounds. It's the refusal to change the instruments. They know what they play, they stick with it, and they jump around between several styles that honestly don't have a lot to do with each other. And it's what makes the song feel even more segmented than the fact that we do have these, you know, stark stops between the styles. It's also what I think makes it most difficult to figure out what's going on with it. Because it does feel like these ideas. None of the sections really evolve in any way. They're kind of static. The folk section stays the way that it does. Uh, we add... I think we add a violin at the end, but it's not a huge idea. Um, the first vocal section, that, that's it. What you hear at the beginning, you hear at the end. The popular section, kind of the same way. Um, and, well, the violin instrumental, the, the rock section. Uh, that's, uh, the violin solo section, I mean. The melody itself moves. It's, it's linear. It's a narrative style of melody. So that kind of changes if you're following the story of the music, but what's happening underneath it and the fact that it stays uh, in the spotlight, that's static too. These sections don't really change. The change comes from the massive leaps between ideas, which actually does fit with folk style writing. Well, actually it kind of fits with modern pop too. We, we don't see as large of jumps, but it's really all about vibe. And what's most important is that as long as the vibe of all your sections fit, it all sounds good together. And that's what happens here, too. Despite the wild jumps in composition, the sonic landscape that's painted, the palette that is used, the instruments of choice don't shift. Their roles don't shift either. They all pretty much do the same thing from start to finish. And it's what allows the song to have any sort of continuity between these sections. It's what allows it to feel a bit more cohesive than anything else. If they had decided to switch to something a bit more synthetic. Electronic. Move to synthesizers for maybe that poppier third section. Or had decided to use an electric guitar for that fourth section. Even an electric violin. I think it would have greatly disrupted the flow of the song and turned it into something that felt unnatural, slamming all of these different ideas together. I think it also would have highlighted how different all of these things are musically and how the vibes would have been drastically altered. Choosing to use the same instruments in the same roles for pretty much the entire song is a smart way to go about doing something that is as varied as this. But what I find really interesting, I think I've said that three times now, I continue to find interesting things about this track, is the final section. Something I haven't talked about yet is the constant tempo changes. I don't think we ever slow down. Every section that has a tempo shift increases the speed of the song until we get to the final section. This kind of brings together a little bit of everything we bring back a vocal line completely intact. It's brought up to speed, but the uh, texture layering of the two vocals, the fact that they're singing the exact same pitches for a vast majority of it, uh, the range, everything about that is identical to when we first heard it. We don't have the rhythmic component of this, though. We have a new rhythm in the uh, drums, and we have a full kit here as well. As I mentioned, this might have come in earlier than this section, but this is when I picked it up. 
I started to hear the snare and tom. I don't think there were cymbals here though, right? Um, and this is a new idea, but it's actually an expansion of the rhythm that we had earlier on with the uh, the bass kick on two and four or one and three. I don't remember what it was. It was giving us, oh, you know what it was? One and the and of two, giving us this little syncopated movement at the beginning of the bar and a little bit of extra space at the end of the bar. We have an expansion of this that introduces the rest of the kit. Um, so we have a little bit from that section as well. The violin is playing alongside the vocals off to the side, but doing its own thing, a part of the violin solo section. I don't think that there's anything in here that matches musically uh, the violin solo section. I think this is still a new part entirely, but the idea that the violin is playing counterpoint to the vocals is not something we've seen before. Uh, in my mind, it's a combination of the vocal-led sections and the violin-led sections smashed together. And so you can see we're starting to get a little piece of everything in here. I don't remember what the stylings of this was, though. I don't think we brought any of the pop writing back. Um, it kind of returned back to those folkier roots, right? Yeah, I think that's what happened. So we don't try to combine the rock and the pop and the folk all together here. Um, but we do bring a little bit of every section together at this faster tempo. And I like this sort of driving idea of raising the tempo until we hit this peak. That's a combination of the entire journey. It's almost as if everything we've learned along the way and the rising tensions of the events of the adventure are all coming together at a head. And this is the climax of the story where everything is its most tense, but it's also a culmination of everything we have done so far. I think that's pretty cool. I don't necessarily know what they're aiming for with it, but that's my read on it. So with that said, I'm going to dive into some lyrics here and see what Requiem is about lyrically. All right, so no lyrical analysis on this one. I couldn't find the lyrics to this track, uh, but I did find some interesting information that actually kind of confuses me more so about the featured uh, guest artist. Um, the band is fronted by two women, Hannah and Ravenin, who among playing their instruments, the cello and guitar respectively, they also both share vocal duty. The featured artist, Emma Richardson, is the bassist and vocalist for... Uh, band of Skulls, and interestingly, she just got picked up to be the replacement bassist for Pixies. That was back in May of this year, so that's pretty big news. Um, so I don't really know that I heard bass in here, and I thought I only heard two vocals, which the band already could kind of fill in. So maybe if I knew Emma's distinct voice as a bassist, or even her voice as a vocalist, I might have been able to pick her out in there and figure out what she contributed but as it stands I'm not really sure and a lot of that is just due to my lack of exposure to either this band or Emma Richardson. Regardless I enjoyed what I heard today I think it is very interesting and I am uh, quite intrigued by them. I, I don't know how typical this is of their work but it's definitely a band that I think I need to do a little bit more digging into and, and see what else they've made. So anyways, those are my thoughts on Requiem by Moulets featuring Emma Richardson. Let me know what you thought of this song. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on, maybe just give me your own perspective or opinion on this track. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, is a link for Linktree. Take you here, you can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we're going to wrap up this week's theme of unique songs. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.